Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gertwolf here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Northrop YA-9. The Northrop YA-9 was a prototype attack aircraft developed for the United States Air Force A-X program. The YA-9 was passed over in preference for the Fairchild Republic YA-10 that entered production as the A-10 Thunderbolt II. Um, criticism that the U.S. Air Force did not take close air support seriously prompted a few service members to seek a specialized attack aircraft. In the Vietnam War, large numbers of attack or ground attack aircraft were shot down by small arms, surface-to-air missiles, and low-level anti-aircraft gunfire, prompting the development of an aircraft better able to survive such weapons. Fast jets such as the North American F-100 Super Sabre, the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief, and the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II proved, for the most part, to be ineffective for close air support. The Douglas A-1 Sky Raider was the U.S. Air Force's primary coast air support aircraft, this prompted the competition of a new attack aircraft, which led to the creation of the very iconic A-10, and the YA-9 was the competitor to that of the A-10. Um, overall, pretty cool uh, looking aircraft and a pretty interesting one to say at least. It does kind of remind me a little bit of the A-10. The fuselage cockpit kind of has a little bit of an A-10 vibe to it, and then the wings themselves look a lot like the A-10. So, uh, pretty cool looking aircraft and a pretty... Uh, Pretty fun one nonetheless to actually go ahead and do a tutorial on um, as this was the A-10's competitor um, during the um, initial creation of the um, attack aircraft that we all know and love today. Uh, but before we go and jump into taking a look at this aircraft, I want to go and give a special link to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can play the small amount of the channel every month and in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, um, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look here at the YA-9. So, going ahead and getting started with here, uh, we have obviously the nose here of the aircraft. Um, it's a very kind of... Um, very kind of smaller aircraft that compared to that of the A-10. It's got a really big uh, vertical stabilizer, but also um, and a really big wingspan, but a very kind of short fuselage. Uh, we have the white tip nose here. This is done up in the color scheme that it was presented as. So we have the National Star Insignia there on the side of the aircraft. As we work way back further, we have the wings here, which are equipped with um, several pylons here. Uh, also, we have a basic loadout here of just carrying bombs, um, which would make sense considering this is supposed to be a close air support vehicle, or aircraft I should say. Um, so we have bombs, uh, we have the two engines here, so it's got two engines on the lower side there. Um, so jet engines, and then we have the uh, really large vertical stabilizer, which really kind of off-puts this aircraft as it's um, pretty big, <laughs> pretty big compared to the uh, rest of it. So uh, really big vertical stabilizer here. Um, the little detail in here, uh, you typically the aircraft number was back there, and then it, it also had a little shield, so staying for some kind of uh, MAGCOM that the aircraft would fall under, uh, which are subdivisions within the Air Force. And then we have the tail flash here, which is based off of a real YA-9, which I think is still in existence, possibly a museum, if I remember correctly, something along those lines. But that right there is pretty much uh, the YA-9, really cool looking aircraft, and we'll make an awesome addition if you're looking for some kind of um, museum aircraft or some kind of, um, you know, what could have been a ground or an aircraft used by the United States Air Force. Anyways, though, without further ado, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and start with layer 1. Quick few things I want to mention here before we go ahead and get started with this layer. is First is, uh, if you are completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these uh, tutorials for aircraft is I like to do half on, half off. What this means is rebuilding the entire sideline of the aircraft on camera and then we'll be building the right side. And it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. For the most part, both sides are completely symmetrical. There's like one part I think that is asymmetrical. And once we get to that part, we will talk about that a little bit further in detail. However, just know that for basically the whole course of the tutorial, whatever we do on one side will be done on the other. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. Now, um, if you are wanting to build the landed version of the aircraft, you will want to make sure that you build this a certain height off the ground. We're going to be building this aircraft as if it's the in-flight version and going back at the end to add the landing gear on as a modification. To make sure you build this correct, this aircraft sits super low to the ground, 
Um, but basically to make sure it's correct, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have this top slab here, which is located up in the front of our aircraft, basically a block and a half up from the ground level. You can see we have a full block of space, half a block of space between the slab and this block, and that right there is going to make our front there or that right there is going to be basically the height that we need to build it. If you're building this in flight, obviously it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have enough um, space between you and the height level in the world. To go ahead and get started with here, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone top slab, followed by an iron trap door coming off that toward the direction you want the front of the aircraft. So our aircraft's going to face that way, so iron trap door that way. We're going to place down a stone top slab back from that. At this point here, depending on what version you're on of the game, if you're on Java, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight upside down pistons. That'll look like that. We're going to go ahead and leave those as is for right now. If you're on a uh, different version, such as Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would instead place down eight stone full blocks. And that reason will be a little bit more clear a little bit later. But yeah, eight, either eight stone full blocks or eight bumps and down pistons if you're on Java. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, and six stone top slabs, and then two iron trap doors on the end there. After that's all finished, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab, cut off this piston, like so, then one, two, three four five six seven eight and nine back then one two and three iron trap doors after that after we have that done we're gonna take our stone top slabs we're gonna go ahead and go off this last one here place down a stone top slab then one and two going back to create a row three there and then an iron trap door here on the end we're gonna go then place down one two three four iron trap doors back or sorry stone full blocks and then two iron trap doors and then a row of four of iron trap doors on the very outside like so you're going to do the same thing we do on the right side here over to the left side, and once you have that done, it should look like something like this for the top-down view. With that all complete, that is going to conclude layer number one of the build, and with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a quartz full block on top of this iron trap door, and then a direct wall coming off that quartz full block going forward. Going back from that quartz full block, we're going to place down a row of stone full blocks. That's going to go all the way back to equal a row of 21. So row 21 back. After we have that done, we're going to then place down either um, a stone, uh, additional stone full block, and then two stone top slabs. However, since we are on um, Java, we're going to place down three pistons. So again, if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I'd place down additional stone block and then two stone top slabs in the space instead of those pistons. So again, upside down pistons for Java, and that alternative method for Bedrock or Pocket Edition. We're going to go and then place down one, two, three stone top slabs back from the pistons, and then two iron trap doors there on the very end. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to go and start working our way out to the side here. We're going to go ahead and begin with by placing down a light or white stained glass pane coming off this quartz block in the front, two andesite walls back, and then one, two, three coal ore blocks back after that. Once we have that done, we're going to take our stone blocks again, place down one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten stone blocks back. Then one, two, three, four andesite walls, one and two light gray stained glass panes, and then one and two skeleton skulls directly after that, coming off the side there of either that stone full block or that stone top slab, or the two pistons there. After that, we want to go and then uh, continue on by going ahead and going to our one, two, three, and fourth stone block here. We're going to place down one uh, light gray stained glass pane to the side here. So light gray stained glass pane, and then we're going to go back one, two, three more so you have a total of four and then we're going to place down a black concrete block followed by one two three and four uh or sorry actually two stone full blocks like that then a stone upside down stair face in this direction and then an upside down stair coming off like that so this right here turns into a corner stair and then you have an upside down stair like so and then uh once we have that done our next row here is going to be a stone or polished dance like top slab coming off this um glass pane a black concrete block behind it and one, two, three, and four stone blocks back. We're gonna go ahead and place down polished black stone upside down stair, polished black stone top slab, and then a wither skeleton skull to both sides of that upside down stair like so. After that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a black concrete block coming off this one here to the side. We also want to place down an iron trap door on top of this one right here, and to the side of this iron trap door and this uh, black concrete block, we're gonna place down two iron trap doors here. Now, if we're on uh, Java. We can go ahead and use our give command, so slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And pressing enter will give us this debug stick, and it should be like this glowing stick. We can go ahead and left click these iron trap doors until we get selected open, and it should say false currently in parentheses. By right clicking these iron trap doors, it will open them to true. 
and they'll sit flat there against the side there of our blocks. Um, so that's our goal there. If you're on a different version that does not have a debug stick, you can go ahead and use some glitches to get these iron trap doors to sit there, or you can go ahead and use birchwood trap doors. Either one will work in that situation. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two uh, stone blocks back, a stone upside down stair, and a stone upside down stair coming off that, so you have a corner stair and then a normal stair after that, upside down. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then put our bombs um, onto the pylons here, or onto the what will be the pylons in the next layer. To begin with, we're going to place down a green terracotta block coming off this iron trap door here, a zombie head forward, a green terracotta block back, mossy cobblestone wall, and then a dark cuckoo trap door on the end there like so, closed flat. We're going to go ahead and skip a space over, place down the same exact thing, so just an air bomb doing the same technique. And we're going to go ahead and place down a, another one right next to that bomb like so. So like that. We're going to go ahead and skip an airspace of one, and we're going to go and do the same thing here, like so. And one more time, right on the side there of that bomb, we're going to go ahead and place down our last bomb on the very edge there of the, of the wing. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there. Uh, we can also go ahead and for a little bit of extra detail for the bombs, take some birchwood buttons and underneath this first block here, we can go ahead and place down some birchwood buttons on the bottom of those blocks like so. And also on the side ones, we can go ahead and place down birchwood buttons here. Unfortunately, you can't really fit them in the inside here on both sides, so we can just kind of pick a side here. And since you're probably going to be viewing, viewing the aircraft from this angle here, Putting the buttons like that kind of helps show that. You won't really be viewing the, the aircraft too much from this point. So uh, that right there is just kind of a little way you can go ahead and add a little bit extra detail there. They're the bombs, like a yellow ring that wraps around them. Um, kind of typical for bombs to have that green and yellow color scheme, especially during this time period this aircraft was around. But uh, yeah, that right there will conclude everything we have for uh, layer two. Taking a look at it from above here, this is what it should look like for the top-down view. With that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number three. Moving down to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this quartz block right here. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone slab right here. And then if uh, we're on Java, a piston that will go right here in this section. An alternative to the piston would probably be a polished blackstone stair facing that direction instead. But uh, for us, since we have, we're on Java, we're going to place down our piston like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of uh, one and two black concrete and then we can go ahead and place down additional row three if you don't plan on doing an interior for this aircraft there is a little bit of room for interior so if you do want to do it it is uh, something that you could do if you wanted to but we're just going to close this off as we're not doing interior for this tutorial so we're just going to place down a row three of black concrete uh, after that so this will be a row of five in total we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks we're going to place down a long row of stone blocks it's going to go all the way back to this last stone top slab here equaling a row of 20 back from that black concrete we then want to place down a anvil that will go right here on top of this iron trap door and then two stone blocks back from the anvil after that's done going back up to our front here we're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of this wall here like that and then an air skeleton skull directly behind it on that um on that block there we're going to then place down one two three and set walls and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen stone blocks back a andesite wall and then Actually, my bad, one quick adjustment here we're going to make. We're actually going to go and swap out this stone full block for a stone upside down stair, and then a stone upside down corner stair right before it, like so. So just go and make that quick little change there. Anyways, after that wall, we're going to go then place down four of our um, gray stained glass panes back, and then three iron trap doors, and using our debug stick here, we're just going to go ahead and close those iron trap doors like we did before. Again, you can use birchwood trap doors or glitch to get those iron trap doors to lay flat. And then lastly here on the side here of this anvil, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign like that on both sides after that's all done going back up to the front here we can go ahead and take our debug stick so if you got rid of it make sure you go ahead and grab it back at this point in time for us java players we're gonna go ahead and right click our piston and it'll get rid of that top portion so our piston will look like that and it helps with the angling there for the top of the aircraft or the shaping we're also going to go ahead and go to the pistons on the bottom here and do the same thing so just like that and we're also going to go ahead and go to the back here and do the same thing here for these pistons on the back just note that by going ahead and activating those pistons, if you place any block or change any block next to these pistons, they will revert back to uh, their normal state. So just keep that in mind. You may want to hold on to the debug stick just in case you misplace something. The uh, pistons will uh, freak out. So just a uh, heads up on that one. Anyways, though, uh, once we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and then place down a item frame next to or coming off this last wall right there and then in that item frame we're going to place down a red concrete block which will be rotated like that to form a diamond 
And then if you're on Java, we'll place a dark liquid sign on the side there. That's going to be a Java only feature placed in an item frame and sign in the same block space. If you're on a different version, just place down the item frame with the red concrete and disregard that sign. We then want to go ahead and go back here to our glass panes. We're going to place down two on top of those first two. And then after that, we're going to place down a row two of upside down stairs. So one, two, like that. After we have that done, we're going to go and take our, our black concrete. We're going to place down a black concrete block. And then one, two, and three stone full blocks fall by a stone stair face in that direction like so. And that will do it for our, that row there. Next row here is going to be a stone uh, top slab coming off this stair here. Then a polished anside full block right here black concrete block behind it and then one two three and four stone blocks back then a polished black stone stair and a polished black stone slab on top of that slab from the previous layer as well as a wither skeleton skull on both sides of that stair like so after that is all done we're going to then take our stone blocks and our top slabs we're going to place down a top slab that will be coming off this one here in the front then one two three four and five stone blocks back and then we're going to go and follow this up with another stone upside down stair like that. For our next uh, row to the side here, we're going to go and place down a row of, or a stone top slab coming off this one right here. And then we're going to place down one, two, three stone full blocks and then one uh, stone top slab and then a iron trap door there on the very end. Our uh, next row, uh, we're going to place down a row of three of upside down stairs which are going to be facing toward the outside here so we're going to have one uh, and two and then an upside down corner stair here in the front so upside down corner stair two upside down stairs and then one and two stone top sides back and then an iron trap door on the end there our next row is going to be one two three four five stone top slabs and then an iron trap door like so we're going to go and then place down a stone uh, upside down stair here so it'll be an upside down stair like this and then going back from it we'll place down two upside down stairs like so so this turns into a corner stair and then you have your two upside down stairs and then two stone top sides back and then an iron trap door like that we then want to place down a uh, stone upside down stair come off this section like so a second stair back then two stone top slabs or sorry one stone top slab and then an iron trap door like that then our next row is going to be a Row of one, two, three stone top slabs and then an iron trap door. Then after that, we want to go and place down a stone upside down stair. So one and two upside down stairs there, a stone top slab and then an iron trap door. And this next row here is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go and place down a row of two of upside down stairs. So one and two. We're going to place down an inside wall coming off this toward the front here. And we're going to go and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of that wall. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a dark liquid sign on both sides of this wall. Like so. So same thing will be done here on both sides. And then after we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, iron trap door. Or a stone top slab, rather. Then an iron trap door. And then a second iron trap door followed by a stone top slab. Like that on the end there. After that's done, we want to go and then place down an iron trap door here, then two stone top slabs, and then another iron trap door to the side there. After that, we're going to go and then place down uh, four rows of four going back. So one, two, three, four of iron trap doors, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four to go ahead and build our wings out to the side there. With that all complete, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for the main structure for this layer. We do have some banners to do, and that's going to be this National Star ins Insignia on the side of the aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials we'll need to make that, and um, we'll go ahead and make that banner real quick. Anyways though, um, let's go ahead and move on to that National Star Insignia banner layout. Alright guys, so to make this banner design, it's pretty simple. We're going to need um, a white banner, a blue banner, two uh, light gray dye, one red dye, two white dye, four blue dye, and the banner pattern that is going to be the flower charge. And once you have that all uh, occupied, or basically all obtained, we're going to go ahead and be make these banners. First banner we're going to start with is those striped banners on the sides. So we're going to go ahead and place down our white banner in the loom, and then our red dye. We're going to do a line that goes horizontally through the center like so. We're going to put that loom or that banner back into the loom, as well as our light gray dye. We're going to do the line horizontally across the top of light gray, and the line horizontally across the bottom. This right here will create this striped banner, and we'll have that obtained. 
Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into making our star banner. So actually instead of a blue banner, we are going to need a white banner instead. So my apologies, just go ahead and grab yourself a white banner and we can go and get started with this. We're going to go and go into our loom, place our white banner, and then our blue die. Our blue die, we're going to do a line here that goes across through the center. We're going to go ahead and grab that banner, then we're going to go ahead and then swap out our die for white die, and then our banner pattern flower charge. This right here is going to create a banner that looks like this. We'll grab this banner like so, place it back into our loom, swap out our white die and our banner pattern here for blue die. We're going to do a line that goes across the top like so. After that's done, we're going to grab that banner, place it back into our loom, and we then want to go ahead and grab our white die, and we're going to go ahead and then do the diamond in the center like so. After that, we're going to place down our, loom ba our banner back into the loom, then our blue die. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, triangle here from the bottom like so. And then we're going to go ahead and then do the lower third line across horizontally across the bottom. And this right here will create our star banner. This banner pattern will go on the uh, side here, like so. So basically to place this after that item frame there, we're going to place down our striped banner, our um, star banner, and then our striped banner like that next to it to make that national star insignia. And that will be on both sides of the forward fuselage. After that's all complete, that's basically it for layer number three for the aircraft. And with that, let's move on to layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number uh, four. For layer four to get started with here, to place down an air brick stair on top of this black concrete block, the second one here, and then we're gonna place down a row three of black stained glass full blocks back, a narrow, narrow brick stair, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven stone slabs back. Uh, we're gonna place down three pistons right here, um, and we can go ahead and use our debug stick a little bit later on those, but yeah, we'll have our three pistons right there next to it. Um, if you're on a different version, I'd probably recommend using a stone full block, a stone stair, and a slab like that to go ahead and create that sloping there. Uh, obviously, pistons here are going to be the best bet. After those three blocks, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of stone blocks that's going to go back seven, and then a glazed, uh, orange glazed terracotta block, two more stone blocks, and then two more blocks of coal here on the very end. On the side of this block of coal here, we're going to place down a stone button and a stone button also on the side of this stone block right there. After that's all done, going back up to the front and out to the sides, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off this stair there. Then one, two, and three black stained glass panes back. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, and eleven daylight detectors back, which will all be turned to the night mode. So they have that bluish kind of gray color. After that's done, we're going to go then take our stone or our light gray carpet and we're going to place down two light gray carpets back. At uh, this point, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and use our command here to grab our debug stick again, and we can go ahead and right-click these pistons like so to go ahead and set them like that. After that's done, though, we're going to grab our light gray carpet, begin with this first row out to the side. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven light gray carpet out to the side here. We then want to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, iron trap doors, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine light gray carpet to the side there. Our next row is going to be a row of daylight detectors, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're going to go ahead and turn these all to the night mode like so. So that um, they don't activate the iron trap doors, but they also blend with the aircraft a little bit better. Our next row here is going to be a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 daylight detectors. Again, turn these all to night mode. And we're going to go and then take our iron trap doors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 iron trap doors to the side there. Next row here is going to be a uh, row of an iron trap door, a daylight detector turned to night mode, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 iron trap doors, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 light gray carpet back. And actually this one light gray carpet, so where this uh, kind of section sticks out, we're actually going to place down a row of three of iron trap doors right there instead. This uh, section here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, like or a uh, daylight detector coming off this one back, and then a iron trap door to both sides there, iron trap door on that center block, and then a light gray carpet there on top of those two stairs like that over the engines. And with that all complete there, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for uh, layer number four. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving in to layer number five. Alright guys, so continuing on with our tutorial, we're actually going to go ahead and move into our final layers here, which will be layers 5 through 10. Pretty simple stuff, and I feel like we can just go ahead and knock all these layers out together. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to be going ahead and going to the front of our cockpit here. We're going to place down an Arabic slab on top of this black concrete block, and then a daylight detector turned to night mode 
directly behind it like that to go and finish off that front canopy. With that complete, our sole attention now is going to be directed toward our very large tail here. We're going to start off by going ahead and going to this third stone block. We're going to place down a daylight detector on top of that, turn it to night mode, a stone slab, and then we want to go and then place down a row of um, seven of stone blocks back from that stone slab, and then a andesite wall here on the very end. We're going to go and then go up our next uh, layer up. We're going to place down a stone stair on top of the stone block. One, two, three stone blocks back from the stair, a anvil, an air stone block, and an andesite wall like that. Next row going up on top of the second block here, we're going to place down a stone block, and rod coming off that going forward, and then one, two, three, and four stone blocks back, and then a light gray stain was painted there on the end to go ahead and make that row there. Going up again, we're going to go on top of this uh, stone block. We're going to place down a light blue stained glass pane. Then one, two, three, four uh, light blue concrete blocks. And there, light blue uh, stained glass pane on the back there. That right there is going to be the tail flash for the aircraft, um, which is kind of more base specific. So uh, specific bases have their own tail flash, which are actually squadrons, um, sometimes bases. Uh, basically have their own tail flash, which helps signify what squadron or what base the aircraft belongs to. Um, this is the color here that was seen on some of the models that were actually made, so that's why I went ahead and did light blue. You can go ahead and change it to whatever colors you want if you want to make this more of like a actual, you know, active aircraft that was actually put into service. So you can change that to whatever color you want. I just want to throw that out there though that you can uh, modify that if you want to, but this is realistic to the actual uh, variants that were, or the actual per models that were made um, for the testing. Anyways, though, on top of this first block here of uh, light blue, we're going to place down a stone block, and then one, two, three stone blocks back. Coming off this stone block toward the front, we're going to place down an end rod, and then on top of that second stone block, we're going to place down a stone slab, daylight detector, turn to night mode, and then an iron trap door directly after that. After that is all complete, we want to go ahead and then take our stone top slabs. We're going to place down a top slab, come off the side of this stone block here, and we're going to go then go back one and two more, so you have a total of three that go back. On top of those, we're going to place down light gray carpet. Next row here is going to be a row of two. So we're going to do one, two back, and then an iron trap door, and again, three light gray carpet. Next row here is going to be a iron trap door, stone top slab, and then an iron trap door. On top of this, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of the stone top slab, and then a light gray carpet on to both sides of it. Next row here is going to be a row of three of iron trap doors, so one, two, three. And we're going to go and then place down an iron trap door on this middle top set or this middle trap door here and then one back and then a light gray carpet there toward the front uh, after that our next row is just going to be uh, two iron trap doors so one two and one two like that to the side there we're going to go then place down a daylight detector coming off this slab turn it to night mode iron trap door back and then two iron trap doors here turn those to night mode and then another set of two like this also turn to night mode like that for our horizontal stabilizers and once we have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have here almost for the most part. A few little additions we're going to make is we're going to go ahead and place down a stone button right here. Stone button here and a stone and then two stone buttons on top there. We're going to go ahead and place down two birchwood buttons on these middle two. Light blue concrete. Again, you can change that depending on what uh, tail flash you want to make there. You can go ahead and do whatever you guys want there design wise. But again, we're trying to keep that realistic to what the aircraft actually look like. And then also a dark oak wood sign on the side there of that anvil like that to both sides. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my tutorial here uh, for the in-flight version of the uh, YA-9. And at this point, we're going to be going ahead and moving into the landing gear. So adding the landing gear onto the aircraft for those of you that are interested. Anyways, uh, that right there is it for the in-flight model. Let's go ahead and move on to the landed version. Before we go ahead and move into the landed version, this is a kind of Garrett from the future here. But uh, I did realize a mistake that... Uh, I did make so I want to go ahead and correct that real quick and that's going to be the intake here of the aircraft. We're actually going to go ahead and replace the stone block here with a stone top slab and the block right behind that, that stone block is going to be a black concrete block. So um, go ahead and make those alterations and your intake should look like that on both sides there. It shouldn't be kind of closed off in that corner space. So again just make go ahead and make those uh, simple adjustments there and that right there will uh, complete the, the in-flight version for you guys and you can go ahead and move on to the landed version now. Alright guys so moving into our landing gear for our first uh, landing gear we're going to start with is the nose gear. This nose gear is offset so it is set off to the left side of the aircraft so that's what we're going to be focusing on here. We're going to be going ahead and going to this stone top slab. We're going to go ahead and delete this and place down a birchwood fence gate in this or fence post in its place. We're going to go then delete the stone top slab in front of that as well and place down a birchwood fence gate right there that will be opened up toward it. Then an iron trap door there underneath that inside wall. After that we want to go ahead and then place down a iron trap door. Cut off this fence post here. And we're going to go ahead and then 
left click this until we get our selected open false right click it and it should close that iron trapdoor on the side there again you can use birchwood trapdoors as an alternative for, for a different version we're gonna go then place down two dark oak wood uh signs on the side of the iron trapdoor and fence gate like so and on the bottom of this fence post here we're gonna place down a bl block of coal and then a white banner then this banner here is custom designed it's a white banner, black border, and black horizontal line for the center there to go ahead and make the kind of a more detailed front wheel. And then we can place this on both sides there of that wheel like so. Again, for us Java players, your pistons probably did uh, revert back. So just make sure you go up to your pistons here and, um, you know, right click them to go ahead and reset them to um, that level right there. Anyways, so that right there is it for your front landing gear. And with that, we'll be going ahead and now moving on to our rear. All right, guys, moving into our rear landing gear. Rear landing gear is also pretty uh, straightforward and easy to do. We'll be going ahead and going down to this section here. We're going to delete these two iron trap doors and then these two stone top slabs. In the place of the stone top slabs, we're going to place down two iron trap doors. In this section here, we're going to place down a quartz upside down stair like so. And then a birchwood fence gate coming off that stair opened up toward it like that in front of it. We then want to place down a stone stair like so, and then a second stair right behind that, followed by two polished black stone walls on the bottom of there of those two stone blocks. And after you have those uh, thrown on, uh, the right there is going to basically do it for that landing gear. You're going to take the same thing, flip it over to the other side, and you'll basically have your landing gear here for the aircraft. This aircraft does sit really uh, low to the ground. It is supposed to sit that low. It is a little funky, but that actually is how it is. So, um, pretty interesting design, and... Um, yeah, looks pretty good, and you'll have the landing gear there done on both sides to go ahead and complete the landing version of the aircraft. Uh, one thing also uh, I just noticed is that this stone full block here actually should be a stone top slab, and this should be a block of concrete right behind that. So uh, you do want to make that correction there on both sides, and I'll probably mention that also at the end of that in-flight version to make that uh, change there too. Uh, anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for... Uh, our landed version and with that that's going to conclude my tutorial here for the YA-9 um, ground attack aircraft. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put to good use if you do end up using this build. I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This being linked from a side of the build to my channel where this video with this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free use of a project you guys are working on. Overall enjoy the build, have fun with all that fun stuff. Again, big sure thanks to the Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible and as always feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Gary 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.